All right, let's get this thing moved out of here. Tractor rides are free. This one you gotta shift gears though. Wish it was an HST, but that's all I got. It was the cheapest one on Craigslist that had a backhoe. So I got it up here with almost no damage. In fact, I wasn't really worried about that thing. I knew I wasn't going to hit the headlight. So normally I would take them out, but I'm pretty good with that old beast. Let's take a look here. It's over on the other side. Um, I had to, other than I had to push it, you know, what, five feet or so. I dragged the back end. I didn't show that in the video. I actually dragged it up as far as I could first. And I pushed it like five feet and then uh, it was it was starting to drag the ass in if you can see the tire marks out there I don't know if you can see that maybe if I went like that you could there's the tire mark right there so anyway and I missed the lift and pushed it right up in here uh, looking good all right ready to continue on here all right so we got some parts coming take a look all from Wolfsburg West. I'll throw that in there, even though they're not a sponsor yet. Mostly because I haven't hit them up. Uh, got this thing here. Windshield repair section. When you do the nose, it's much easier to do that. And the nose. down those right side up those okay. of course I got all this stuff from Eddie and Dave's garage because he has he gets Gerson and uh, classic fab this is classic fab he got this for me of course, I paid for everything, and then no free VC or believe me, this thing 
these they make different you know you guys that I'll show you this is Wolfsburg West the older ones before this all you could get was Fokker home and it came with the brackets mounted on it let me show you what they look like so Wolfsburg West sells these you know together with that <clears throat> and the reason they that they started making these is par partly because the ones I was getting from them that they used to get, they used to not make themselves. They were uh, really terribly shaped. So in some of my older videos, you might see me talk about that. This portion here was really badly formed. It was always flat and had weird stuff in it. And most of the guys were removing the brackets and mounting just this part on there. So, uh, because it's really hard to weld these with the floor in, you can't really do it. Um, so a lot of guys aren't replacing these and leaving them in place. Um, and that's why Wolfsburg, I think, started making them and then made them better. And their metal's better than the Clocker Home stuff. The Clocker Home is basically a lot of pot metal in with their mix. So it's crap, but I mean, it works. It, it does work. And then I got the lower nose. So just so you know, there's an order to put these on. This goes on first, but you have to put the nose on first to line up where this goes. Well, that's where a lot of guys make mistakes. They put it on, they realize, hey man, my nose doesn't line up. It's like, no, because you gotta put this piece on, get the height right, with the nose on and then take the nose back off and mount this piece and then mount the nose. It's a little bit bass backwards, but that's the way it is. So anyway, that's some parts I got.
All right, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit here. It's trying to beat the sun. It's just catching up to me now. This side, I got that tree. And as soon as the sun gets past a certain point, it's in the sun, except, you know, it's starting to get that time of year now where the sun is starting to get a little lower in the sky, not going straight across. So I get a little bit of shade right here, so it's kind of nice. And I have the shade sails and stuff to help out a little bit. Those blew down in 80 mile an hour winds, the other ones I had, so I had to buy new ones. Um, but no big deal. We had my shed still stayed up. Everybody tells me that thing's going to blow over in 80 mile an hour winds. Oh, I think I'll take right now. I'm like, you guys have no idea. Things are like so strong. Anyway, check this out. We got a prime. I'm just going to go through after this is dry and probably after I put the rack on. I don't know. Um, and then once I get the rack on, then I'll kind of know. I just tack those in place roughly. Uh, I don't know if they need to go back more. I'm not sure. So, um, and I got these things here, the dividers, right? It's kind of weird how that they're laid out. But anyway, um, I got to figure out where to put them. And I won't know that till I put the rack in, I think, when I had that bar going across. And I figure out how that, that thing works. I have no idea. I got to get the dividers out and look at them. And I'm just going to tack, like, tack them in place there. I'll go back and re-weld those and then I'll continue on a little bit more on the firewall I don't know what else I'm gonna to do to it I'm probably just gonna go through and just take some glazing maybe and just kind of do some little spots here and there there's you know some marks in it and stuff I'm definitely not gonna get the waves out of any of that you know like I said you're down here you can see you know the the tops right here <laughs> so and there's bars all over the place and it's kind of dark in there, even if I put lights in there, which I might do. I might put LED lights in. It'd be kind of cool when you open the door up. I'll have a little switch maybe and some LED lights. So if I use this truck at all, it'd be kind of nice. You know, you can see inside. Um, but because I got tons of LEDs right now. So, yeah. And then I'm going to seam seal all that stuff, all the ugly stuff. And then these gaps, a little filler. I'm going to do some... So you're just going to fill that with seam sealer. The gas tank's right here. You can't even see. That's where that bird was. So That's probably from the acids from that bird. huh? Yeah. Anyway, I'll just, I'm going to seam seal all that up really good. All these little cracks. The gap here. You know, all that will get done. Uh, I just got to let this dry. And we'll get back into that in a little bit. And then I'll put that rack on here and check it out. Let's take a look at what it looks like with the top on there. Um, yeah, it just needs some adjusting from here. Uh, I measured from the top of the frame to the bottom of the roof. It's exactly the same left to right. Uh, the whole truck is leaning a little bit. So if you look back right here, it's not. It's the suspension. If you look at that wheel, it's a little bit more cambered than this one is. So that's what's going on there. Uh, the whole truck is leaning so but it's not it's nothing to do with the frame because the frame is exactly the same height on both sides to the bottom edge of the cab um, so it, I mean it's it's not even a half a sixteenth off from one side to the other so it's really really good so anyway you can kind of see how this looks on here um, I just clamped them on so it's kind of pushing this one out on this side and it's a little bit tweaked. I probably have to take the deck lid and just tweak it once. I've had worse than that with an accident damage, <laughs> you know, yeah, or just normal stuff. So that is all that's wrong with there. So that's probably in good enough position there. So I guess I'll probably start tacking it. I'll probably just throw a few tacks in there and then, you know, double check everything again. Make sure nothing moves. Sometimes I get it, you know, if you get it too hot, 
you know, I'm going to use this Harbor Freight welder because it's a little bit colder welder than the other one will just get so hot. Sometimes it'll warp stuff. So, well, or this one just doesn't do that as much, but it still gets a good weld. So anyway, I may just do that for a little bit. You can see the gaps. I've got them pretty tight. If you can see there, that's a pretty tight gap. Um, in there it's about the same but if you notice this is a little bit this is touching here so you know I'm gonna have to adjust it down a little bit or this one up really is what it needs to happen because you can see my hinge divot is not quite centered so I may just heat that up and knock it a few times to get it uh, center I don't know could always recut it and do it I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but Definitely gonna have to do a little bit of something there. And I think that, yeah, cause it's a little bit wider on the bottom than it is on the top. So, I mean, I told you it was square. <laughs> if you guys didn't believe me, I checked it really good. So yeah, it's a little tighter down here, a little looser up there. And that would bring it up, would get rid of that gap and clean up this one. And the rest you can do a little bit of tweaking, you know, you can grab the corner and just kind of move it. You know, you gotta get it around and it'll work from there. So I think it's in the right place. So let's work on the side and then put a couple tacks on here and see what happens. Again, it's just clamped in place. So once you, if you can see the bottom edge, that lines up too. It's straight, no gap on either side. So yeah, uh, but the deck lid, of course, is, you know, it's got a crown in it, you know. It goes, you know, a little bit of a crown. So I'm going to fix that issue still. You know, I just threw some filler into some of the dents and I haven't got it all done. I just just did that and I'm going to uh, do some more work to it, of course. I mean, I get all that out of it and, and I'm not looking to. Um, but it, it, this thing actually fits better than a lot of the buses I've had. So that's good enough for me. All right, starting to look like a truck again. So this side's pretty good except for that rocker i was saying is too tall i uh, don't see any other way to fix that i'm just gonna have to cut that off and put it back on lower i mean i'm not gonna cut off the bottom i'm just gonna cut it right through the middle hopefully it'll not fight me too much it might end up a little bit of fight in the very end there but uh anyway so everything looks right i'm just gonna weld this sucker in how about that I don't see any other reasons why not to, so just get it done. Weld it in. Uh, the heights are exactly the same from here to the bottom edge of here. Both sides exactly the same. So that's the, you know, if it's that if it's that good, it's good enough for me. It'll it'll work. Yeah, I think that'll hold. Yep. I know that one looks a little amateurish. Definitely amateurish. Yeah, it'll hold. Yeah, I think we're uh, looking pretty good here. I put quite, if you can see the size of those welds, I really wrapped them in there really good. I just figured why not, you know, do a little bit extra, make them nice and strong. Had the heat up really high and just got the weld penetrated all the way into the corner and then out you know pretty far away so that it'll hold pretty strong I'm not going to weld this the bottoms uh, there's really no point in doing that the, 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 the bar going back and forth is the weak point now where those things are attached they'll be on there forever so anyway we'll move on to the next thing thinking again trying to figure out stuff um, I know I'm not probably not ready to do this yet but I'm just kind of thinking ahead a little bit 
and some of the stuff that I don't know yet. Um, I don't really know this part was so rotten um, exactly what it looked like, but I remember there was a piece that went in here. There was a divider piece in the middle, and these are the dividers. Um, and it just kind of fits in there like that. And I can fix those, just fix the bottom edge of them. They're really not in that bad of shape, I mean, for every, compared to everything else, right? You know. So, um, kind of figure that out. Kind of go back to my metal pile. Find whatever is left of them, right? That way I can, that's why I can call that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's my quarter panel, as you see there, moving out of the way. Um, and then this thing, and it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know, you know, these brackets and stuff for the gas tank. Um, I don't really know exactly where they went. But I put the tank in here, and we'll show you that in a second. So you can see here where the tank straps go. So that's where those mounts go. These mounts here, right? These things. So it sets on top of those and then the straps go over. And there's like only one place that I could really put those and that's where they are that I could tell that I put the tank in. Go to the other side. We'll move this thing out of the way. So then the fuel inlet, outlet, goes down in the hole there, and then this thing fits so that the straps line up with those grooves, right? And then this thing. This is the wrong gas door, but we'll take a look at it anyway. Um, goes right here, centered on that hole. So I'm going to say that those straps are in the right place, right? Well, then I look at this. Um, again, could be a parts issue, more than likely it is. Um, but if you look here, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm trying to get it to the right place let's maybe mm, let's go closer how about that okay if you can see this groove this cut out right here um now i tried both sides um does not line up and i think it's supposed to line up with this and that's because maybe the tank is supposed to be over this way a little more and then those things fit in the groove I don't know, but not a big deal. It's just something I'm kicking around right now. I'm not going to do this today, but uh, those are the kind of things you look at. Weird. Anyway, a little teetery in there. Needs the uh, gasket and stuff in there. I'll, I'll just make one. I'm not going to buy that sucker. Anyway, it's just foam or uh, that little thing around the tank. And then the straps, I've got to make those still. Um, I have the ends of them. And they're, they're one of them's like completely broken in the middle. One of them's okay. I, maybe I can use it again. And uh, I'll try to find those dividers. Let's see if I can find them. There's this piece. Which I can just... Fix the bottom edge and clean up all the rust on that. It would be bad, I guess. It's fine. Well, I guess I'll have to come back to that. But just kind of thinking out loud, showing you guys some of the stuff I'm thinking about. Um, and I need to make this thing here. If you can see, that goes right here. Okay. And uh, I mean, this thing's. Huh. It's pretty rotten, but on the surface rust, it's not rusted out all the way. 
I'm gonna get this side of it. Hmm. Nah, I don't have to make a new one. Looks like they made it in two pieces. That won't be hard to do. Um, then. So I'll just make an L piece and another L piece and then use the, uh, I'll use the shrinker and then get it to be around like that and then put that in there and it's all like 18 gauge. So it's a little harder to cut. I'll have to do that with a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter cuts the 18 gauge really easy when you start using the, uh, shears and all that 18 gauge is really hard to cut. So. I'll just cut out a piece with that and make that piece and I'll be coming up. I don't know if I'll get this stuff in this video. I'm just showing you guys some of the stuff I've got to make right now. And it's kind of, it's, it's going to take a lot of time. This little stuff, you know, I've forgotten about these dividers and how much time they're going to take to make. So those little divider, upper divider parts, let's tuck them over there. The pieces that go, when I put this in and I weld that in place, I might be able to do the ones that go like right you guys can see it right in here well this is upside down it doesn't help much right it's upside down. why did you guys tell me why don't you tell me how I put it upside down okay it goes like that right and there's a little piece filler piece that goes in here that um, I think there's one here. There might not be because it had the oil tank. I know there's one in the middle and there's a little piece in the middle there. I don't know. I can't find that one center piece yet. So I don't know exactly what that looks like again. So I'll have to figure that out. And you know, they do sell them, I think. But uh, I don't know if they'll even work or fit. So for what I'm doing, since I use square tubing. Which is a whole lot, in a lot of ways, easier for this project. I think it would have been really hard to use the original. Because getting it square, I would have had to build the outside edge, all this first. And then get it square. And then, you know, get it right. It would have been, I guess it would have been a little bit easier as far as that goes. And then put the pieces in the middle. I would have probably put some in the middle first. You know, put some cross members in. And then... Put it on top of and i don't think they even yet make these so there's a lot of parts that aren't available yet you see them you know the single cab they show they're going to be making the whole single cab um that's just still in production right now so um you know and it's all coming so like all the silver metal you see here that's the same manufacturer that's making the whole parts for the single cab which that company and back east is buying them, BBT is buying them, uh, Walsh Rig West is going to have them. Um, so is you know a lot of the other places, and some of them already do, like the roof sections they have already made in that. Yeah, I guess next I'll take off the quarter panel piece I showed you a minute ago, and then I'll take this off, just take a grinder and just knock this whole edge off, and then just. Uh, peel and then maybe just cut right here and then peel off that section there the issue with that is the wiring harness to go to the boom over here that thing over there is kind of stuck so uh, we'll have to figure that out too it's kind of and then if i pull the wires off of it i'm going to want to put them right back on it uh, so I don't know how either they're going to come off. That thing was pretty. And I need to save that part because it's the only, you know, I could just go without it and have the boom work, but it'd be kind of cool to have the original one, wouldn't it? So I'm going to try and save that as best I can. Uh, it was really, really stuck on there when we tried to take it off. So, but I'm going to go try and take that off. And, you know, inside there, I'm sure there's those little screw connectors and I'm, I'm sure that they're probably all stuck, you know. I don't know, you know, I found stuff. Some things come off easy, some things are like, you know, some things are like totally stuck and you never get them off. And then you look at the rustiest bolt ever and it just comes right out. You know, so it's, it's hard to say. Anyway, well, let's move on. All right, let's work a little bit on this quarter panel. Uh, I'll show you what the old one looked like just a second here. Just kind of got to get some of this stuff ready. This has a 67 
Uh, if we look here at the gas door, I don't know if I can get that in the video. Maybe it will. How about that? 67 only gas door on it. So it tells me at some point they replaced this quarter. In fact, if you guys watch some of the other videos, I was having a little trouble fitting this. It was because this quarter panel was hit and there was a little bit of a kink right there that they didn't get out. So when I knocked the kink back down, of course the pieces all fit in the back. So it wasn't an accident. So it's supposed to have not this lip on it. It's supposed to, this lip is not correct. This is a late model. I saved it for somebody else because everybody likes the original, the original flat, they call it, they call it flat, I don't know what. But um, the ones that you buy aftermarket are a little tiny bit different, and honestly, I don't see the point. But what I need to do is just need to bend a 90 on here. So let's do that real quick. Some of you guys watch me do this in high speed, so maybe I thought it would be kind of fun to do this in regular time. So, the old-fashioned Harbor Freight metal bender. So, I'm just going to guesstimate a half inch. See how close I get it. Get it straight. Yeah. Not like Musty One, where you've got that fancy... Fancy one that uh, electric one, man, or whatever it is. There we go. Got that bent. Bet you measure that it's like within thirty second of an inch. All right, so I'm gonna. This thing it didn't really bend like a really clean edge, so. Well, let me try a hammer and dollar. Actually, maybe I'll use ductile pliers and bring you guys back in here. Okay, it's gonna be a little noisy. This can, these things can kind of help bend. Hope I get them right. Can help bend the uh, metal a little bit tighter. And you could do this whole bend with these. It takes a little longer. You guys are cramping my style. notice I'm using cold rolled steel versus the other stuff uh, I went to buy I usually buy it as remnants and I went to buy it like regular price at um, IMS metal and it was like I think twice as much money was it Seventy bucks a sheet. Yeah, I was a little. Went to my uh, metal supply for wrought iron. And uh, it was only thirty eight bucks. <laughs> It's getting a little uh, dip going on. I don't have to straighten that up. Uh, sometimes I'll do this after it's on. It's a little easier, maybe. Nice and straight. 
not exactly the best place to work right now. As you can see, it's starting to do that. So I'll use the shrinker. Um, yeah, I'll shrink it down just a little bit. And then bring that thing back straight again. Show you what it looks like. So once this gets on there, it's going to warp a little bit anyway. Oh, no, I never warp when I do butt welding. I have a right. <laughs> yeah, if you're using a TIG, maybe. So that's going to go like that. Gonna... Clamp it on there and take a look at it. Yeah, that's worth every bit of whatever it is. $75 or whatever for one of those opening wheel opening things right <laughs> i can't believe some of the prices on this stuff um yeah i gotta raise this back up looks like uh it's hitting right here so i think what i measured well and i think i know what i measured was from the top of the frame 15 inches so i've got to go up mm quarter in the front and then uh, like half inch in the back so I've got a three quarters of an inch in the back I'm going to cut some of this lip off and raise that up there all right it's about right there I think how's that look guys look a lot better with the right lip on there now if I was going to butt weld this, what I could probably do is just jack it up, take the wheel off, and then take my uh, Sharpie and just measure, go around the backside and just follow my line. Or I could trim that up a little bit but first and then follow it. Or the other way would be to uh, just trace around it right now. Uh, or cut through or clamp it really good and cut through two two layers and then do it that way but I could just cut a trace around it like that and then cut it just below the line you know about eighth of an inch below the line and then just start massaging it until it fits you know that's one way to do it uh, but I'm probably just gonna figure out uh, I'm you know like I wouldn't want to lap this close to that edge it's just a little hard to get filler to feather that in and i'm going to knock this down it's going to be a little bit hard to do it's better if it's further away so probably what i'll do is i'll probably cut like a line this direction kind of like what's there and uh i may may just go to the back side of it and mark it with a sharpie and then pull it off and look at the back side where it's where the void is behind it and then i'll go past that a bit and just you know kind of go up at an angle and then this part i'll butt it tight and then knock it down with a hammer low so it's just a little bit low and then fill it it looks the same you know when you're done it looks the same it just makes people feel better when uh it's butt welded in you know not exactly the strongest way to do it but yeah, it makes people feel better. So it's, it all depends on you, what you want to do. I don't like to do it that way. It just takes a little longer, and it's not as strong. So I prefer doing it lap like the old school way. Um, back years ago when I worked in a body shop, if you um, if you got caught uh, lap or not, or caught, caught, caught butt welding something in, um, you know, you'd lose your insurance contract. It'd be over real quick because the strength isn't there. So, you know, today, I don't know, you know, on the old 16 gauge cars, it, it, it didn't really matter that much. You know, this is originally was 19 gauge, we're using 20. You know, I, I just prefer, you know, 22 on the new cars. You know, you've really got to lap it then. You know, you can't butt weld that stuff. It'll, it just, it's gonna crack. You know, it's not good to butt weld that, that thin of a metal. But 19 gauge is kind of, eh. You know, 18 gauge is fine to do butt welding. And 19 gauge is kind of, 20 gauge is a little pushing it, but you know, it's guys do it all the time. I'm not saying they're not doing it right. I just prefer doing it the other way. 
that's just my way to do it. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this video at this point. And then uh, uh, the next one, because I the, the problem is right now is I need to make some noise. It's kind of early in the morning. And uh, I really need to get a video up because I'm going to be leaving town for about 10 days. And uh, so I want to have something for you guys to watch, you know, while I'm gone. And hopefully I'll get enough videos up for that. But um, I may make something while I'm gone like I did last time. You know, uh, some of you guys say, oh, wow, you're not working right now, so you're doing this whole thing. Well, you, you know, yeah, I, I have been working, um, but my work kind of works like this. You know, like I work like periodically, you know, I, I don't work like most people do you know, nine to five or whatever. I go out and I'm gone for, you know, two weeks. You know, I was in Vegas for 10 days, you know, working out in the heat, you know, and, and during this time, you know, so... On this build, during the time I've been doing this truck, I've actually worked uh, 10 days in Vegas, and I did another 10, where'd I go? I were out of town one day, and then I was gone for another 10 days during the time when I was doing this. I know there was another job, but I just can't remember it right now. But um, I think I've been gone about almost a month of the time that I've been building this, so... Yeah, I haven't been working on it the whole time, but mostly, you know, every day I go out here and work on it when I'm, you know, when I'm not working. So, and, and, but that's the way my work is all the time. And then I'm gone for two months, sometimes of the year, you know, two or three months I'm gone, you know, doing my stuff and, you know, I, and, you know, it makes pretty good money. So it's not like, you know, not like most people work, you know, they have to work nine to five, five, you know, a whole year round and they might make. It might make as much as I do. I don't know. I can't really say, you know, but I'm um, just saying that, you know, I, my schedule is kind of weird. It's kind of off. You know, it's, so it's just because I'm a specialist. I do stuff that, that, you know, when I do things, I do it faster than everybody else. I do it faster and, and just as good when I'm doing my normal stuff, just like kind of what I do with my body work. I do really fast. Um, I do that with my sign industry stuff. I'm faster than all the other guys are. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to just be braggadocious about it, but I'm just saying that's just the way it is. And um, I do it faster and I do a really good job on the stuff that I do. Um, there's other guys that are super good sign guys that are fast and do better work with installing signs. And then I do. And I, that's not what I do. So um, because I do that, I get paid well for it. And, you know, and I and because I'm faster, you know, it's just like. If you were the, if let's say you did twice as much production as another person does and, you know, you did the same amount of time and, you know, and your work quality was better than theirs, you're going to make more money. That's just the way it is. So that's what I do. Yeah. So anyway, we'll move on and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe. Uh, can't wait to get this quarter on and make that thing. God, you can feel it. You know what, you guys, the distance is perfect too huh. between there and the tire. It's exactly right, so it's telling me something. I'm doing it right. Talk to you in the next video.